Hi, folks. It's Bill and Jonathan here. Have you guys ever wondered if you can take um, tax benefits and pass them through being an investor in a passive investment? I stay up at night wondering that very question. <laughs> very exciting stuff. We'll talk to you about that right after this. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the Passive Accredited Investor Show. I am Bill Fairman. This is Jonathan Davis. Um, I don't know what to say because my teleprompter stopped working. <laughs> we are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders for the uh, real estate investors in the Southeast. If you are interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com. Click on the Apply Now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the Accredited Investor tab. Don't forget. And hit the bell. Yeah, hit the bell. You got to hit the bell. You need like a bell that is concerned. <laughs> Ding. Also, do not forget about Wednesday with Wendy. Wendy gives up uh, 30 minutes uh, per person on Wednesdays uh, with anybody that wants to talk real estate. So sign up. There's her calendar link. Uh, and it's also over in the uh, chat side of the page. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you didn't know, you can save these chats. I don't know how you do it here. <laughs> I know how to do it on Zoom. I'm not sure how to do it on uh, a live stream. But uh, you can also just uh, click and paste. All right. Um, but she's usually backed up a couple of months. So go ahead and get in line. So that uh, comment section that is for questions that you guys might have. It's on the right hand side of your screen uh, or underneath, depending on the platform that you're viewing us from. Woo. All right. Finally got all that out of the way. It's good. It's real good. <laughs> all right. So we had uh, Mike Schlotnick with Tempo Fund. Tempo funding, Tempo, Tempo growth, fund. Growth, fund. Yeah, growth fund, and he's also got uh, another Tempo fund. But uh, uh, anyway, yeah. Big Mike. He's about what? Dot com. Five foot two? Is he you know, yeah. somewhere? Yeah. Big Mike Fund with a D. Dot com. Don't go to Big Mike Fun, or you'll see something you Ooh. probably don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Ruin your browser history for sure. <laughs> but so. <laughs> Some of the things that we were discussing were the way to pass through tax benefits uh, to the passive investors. It, is it possible? And, you know, I hate getting into the weeds with these things, but this is something that people need to understand. Yeah. If you get any type of a tax benefit that is passed through on a passive uh, investment. Okay. And what does passive mean? Passive means... Uh, it's not active. Yeah. Well, how does the IRS deem okay, passive? Okay. So passive means you're investing in something that is providing you an income that you have no control over, no management, no no one's you're you're not swapping time for dollars. Yeah. Okay. Is is there an hour limit as well? Like you have to like show that you haven't worked so many hours. I'll get that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But. If you are uh, actively employed, you could be actively self-employed with one industry and you're getting income from that. Mm -hmm. That does not count as passive income. Only passive income from investments is going to count as passive income, which means in short that if you have, for example, a uh, property that you're depreciated, you've got stuff you're writing off, uh, you got values you're writing down. All those uh, are tax deductions, mm -hmm. but it's only against other passive income. So you can't deduct, you can't take deductions from active income and put it against passive. Right. So and vice let, versa. let's say, for example, you're a dentist mm -hmm. and you have active income from your dental practice. Okay. So it's active income is typically W-2 income is how yeah, we or it could be, 10, I guess it could be 1099. Yeah, or it can even be 
K-1, but if it's your business, that's active income. Okay. Um, however you get paid to your dental practice. A mm -hmm. lot of it sometimes, depending on how the structure is set up, could be just owner draws. That's still active income. So, but you're invested in a syndication okay. where there's property ownership in it. And it, it is a, we'll call it a uh, value add uh, syndication. So, so this is going on for five or six or seven, 10 years. You, you're buying it. You're adding value in the first year or two. And the then, sponsor is. Yeah. The sponsor is. And you're just participating. Right. Yeah. So you have cash in it. And over time, they can pass through some of these write-offs that they're getting. Depreciation, uh, write down in values, uh, because, and we'll get to that in a minute with some IRA stuff too. Uh, as you're trying to add value, you're actually going to lose value <laughs> during the process. Cause when you, you buy it, you're buying it, it it's got a value attached to it based on the uh, current appraisal that mm -hmm. was purchased it. Then as you're rehabbing or making this place a little bit better, you're going to lose income. You're going to, because you're paying more to bring it up to standards. So you're talking about an, in, you're an income producing property. So it went from producing X, as a functioning place, but need of repairs. Right. Now it, it, there is not functioning at all and it's being repaired. So there's, or, no, there's less income coming or, in. Or it could be that you haven't lost any people, but now your expenses are higher than your income. So if it's based off of an NOI and a cap rate, your value has gone down because your net operating income yes. has plummeted because of your repairs. Yeah. And in most cases you're losing tenancy because you, you have to go in and repair places mm -hmm. and they can't operate while you're repairing. Well, tell them how that's a good thing. Well, it's a good thing um, because you're, you're passing through uh, these lower values. If you're, the one thing that comes to mind to me is if you have a traditional IRA and you invest $100,000 into this fund. And so that's the value of your investment. Mm -hmm. And two years later, they've had to write the value of that property down because it's not uh, getting as much income, mm -hmm. that would be a great time to convert your traditional IRA to a Roth because you have to pay tax on the money uh, from the traditional IRA because it was uh, tax deferred when you were putting the money aside. So let's say it lost 20% value. Yeah. So now you're only paying taxes on 80,000 instead of the hundred thousand. And then in that Roth, so you've just paid taxes on that 80,000. And then when the income comes back up and let's say the value goes above your, your, you know, your hundred thousand, then that is all tax free. Correct. When you yeah, realize well, that income now it's a, a Roth. Now it's a Roth. Yeah. So it's tax free from then on. So mm -hmm. you've saved money on the conversion because you're not paying taxes on as much money. Yeah. And then at the same time, everything else you make in the uh, investment is tax free. So that's, that's a heck of a benefit. So that really, that scenario really only like. Really, it only applies to somebody that is investing with an IRA. Into a value add scenario typically, right? Uh, correct. Yeah. Um, the only way that's going to help you is if the value goes down and if the value goes down and it's not a value add scenario, you've got issues anyway. <laughs> that's, that's the Yeah. You don't want to be in that. Cause, cause we knew in the value add scenario, this is, this is common. It happens every, almost every time mm. you're, you're going to get into a place where the value is actually less. Yeah. And, and every year with your IRA, you're required to turn in a, a fair market value form, yeah. or at least your um, uh, fund sponsor, what, fund manager is doing that for you. One of the, I guess, easy example, easiest examples would be multifamily, right? Mm -hmm. You see a lot of syndications, people investing in the multifamily. Someone buys a multifamily that let's say it's 50% occupied, but it needs, um, all the units renovated. Mm -hmm. Well, they start kicking people out, you lose occupancy. So then if you're the sponsor of that project and you have self-directed IRA people in it, once you knock all those tenants out and start injecting capital into that project, you want to reevaluate the value of that property, which will be less than what you purchased it for right. because the, the income's less. And then, then as you fill it, you do the repairs, you fill it back up, the income jumps back again. And hopefully these people have converted to a Roth with the lower values and all their gains are realized tax-free. Right. 
That's beautiful, Bill. That's beautiful. Now, here's another scenario, and this is where you get your uh, pass through depreciation. So, w w let's talk about a uh, self storage facility. Okay. And you're doing the same thing. You're still getting a value add of some sort because no one is going to, well, most people are not going to buy a fully functioning turnkey uh, self storage unit unless you're in a REIT. <laughs> Well, a fully functioning turnkey storage unit. What are those? Those are like trading out like a four cap yeah. or a three cap. It's, so, you know, unless you're in a REIT, you can't afford it. When you're in a private placement syndication type of thing, it's always going to be about value add, unless it's just in a really high cap rate area. Mm. Um, but that said, you can do what's called uh, cost segregating. Mm. And this is where you have, um, let, let's say, for example, you're going to depreciate property over time you're able to go in and appreciate or depreciate items that wear out faster than other items. Yeah. So you have these uh, specialists that will come in and say, for example, the, the rolling door, can't see my arm, the rolling doors. <laughs> Scoot over this way. Yeah. Come on the, in. The, the rolling doors at the units are going to wear out a lot faster than say the concrete floors. Well, cause what's the typical depreciation schedule? Is it 35 years? Uh, I mean, you can speed them up and do like 20 years, but it, it's a pretty long time. Yeah. So like you can get like rolling doors. They have a life expectancy of five years. Yeah. Whatever the life expectancy or, or the, I think they call them uh, useful, useful uh, time frame or whatever it's called. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, once it's past that uh, useful life expectancy, uh, you can go ahead and depreciate that uh, up front. So you're able to take the depreciation faster mm -hmm. and it's good for the project, uh, but it's also good for the investors because they can take those depreciation mm -hmm. uh, benefits and pass them through to the investor themselves. Here's the problem. Yeah. Again, if you don't have passive income, it does you no good. So you get all that, but you have no passive income to, so where do you get passive income from? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I feel like so, I'm full of good questions today. Um, we always teach people and everyone should know this anyway. You need to be uh, diversified in anything that you're doing. You can be very diversified in the real estate space. Uh, notes, uh, lending, they have zero tax benefits, but there's plenty of ways you can get passive uh, income from those. But and, and, uh, you said something, we talked about the hours before to yeah, be I'll, passive. Yeah. I'll, I'll get that in a minute. Okay. You um, keep pushing me off and I really, I really want that number. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll get there shortly. So um, if you're in the lending space, there are no tax benefits. So if you have a passive investment in lending somehow, uh, typically you're going to get uh, a K one and you're going to pay tax on it. Now mm -hmm. the used, used to be the only way you could overcome that is by having it in a tax deferred or tax exempt vehicle, right? Correct. Now back to the number of hours spent There it is. in there the is. Trump, uh, tax, um, uh, I guess the, the new tax plan he had in 2017, mm -hmm. they made some adjustments to, uh, lending, uh, and considering it an active income. And so they, uh, basically said that you may be subject to uh, active income, even in a passive investment where you have no control. Uh, but they put a time frame on it. If you spend uh, more than a hundred hours a year, it's considered active income. If you spend 99 hours a year, it's passive income. So those people who were taking their IRA personally and lending money out, Make sure that you're only spending 99 hours a year or less, or yeah. uh, that's going to have a UBIT uh, situation. What's tax UBIT? Good. Unrelated business income. Mm -hmm. And that tax is at 45% of the profit. That's, so, that's, that's pretty low. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, but again, I don't want to get into the weeds with all this kind of stuff, but there's uh, other ways that you can offset that. It's the same kind of a tax that you would get if, the fund had leverage on it as well. And that's for another time. So if you are in a 
fund that invests in real estate on the debt side and you're an equity member of that fund, you are a pass you're getting passive income from that fund. Yeah, you're you're getting passive income whether you're um a debt member or right. an equity member. Okay. Because but but if you're a debt member, if you if you spend more than a hundred hours doing anything on reconciliation, like reconciliation, then it's active. Yeah. Well, that would be the same on the equity side. Oh, it would be. It, yeah. Okay. If, if you're if you're a passive investor, it's highly unlikely that you're spending more than two hours a year. It's all on this tax investment. Time. Yeah. All at tax time. If you're somebody that is actively investing their own IRA money mm -hmm. to individuals, you could spend a lot more than a hundred hours a year yeah. keeping up with your investment because it's your investment. I know it's not yours. Technically it is the IRA and it's not benefit of you, but you're the one controlling it and mm -hmm. uh, you want to keep up with it. But if you're the one, you know, doing the inspections and, uh, you know, walking the properties and all that kind of stuff when you're lending this money, it could, it could get up there. Just make sure you don't spend more than 99 hours a year. Which is a great reason to to buy notes with your self-directed IRA and not originate them. Well, that's true too. But mm -hmm. you still have due diligence that you have to do. Just make sure it's uh, quick. Not more than 99 <laughs> hours a, a year. Real quick. So I've kind of lost my place now, but so well, when we get to the, um, spreading of the wealth, so to speak. So the, uh, to, to be able to offset your uh, passive depreciation, if you are invested in say a syndication that holds real estate, and then you're invested in uh, a, a, some sort of a lending fund that has no tax benefits, you can at least take those tax benefits to offset the income that you're getting in the, in the passive lending fund. Gotcha. So my, one of the things that people worry about with a lending fund is that they only want to invest IRA money in it because there's no tax benefits, but that's not really true. If you have uh, investments in other things that have tax benefits that are passed through passively, then you can use those tax benefits to offset the income that you're getting on um, the cash that you have in these funds. Yeah. So that's a, 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 I know we're getting into the weeds in this, but it's something that really needs to be said. You don't always have to invest in a fund that doesn't have tax breaks with an IRA with, with a tax deferred or tax uh, exempt account. Yeah. And yeah, you know, is it like your, your mileage may vary? I mean, every, everyone has different scenarios, but if you have cash locked up in other things that have tax benefits, but you're still sitting on some cash that you'd like to get invested sure. passively, you could put that in there and they can offset each other. And the, the point there is that you need to be diversified in, uh, real estate holdings, as well as other means, which would be uh, the lending side, owning notes, maybe even uh, tax liens, all those things. There, there's all kinds of avenues in the uh, real estate side of things that uh, you can still be very diversified and still be in the same space. Was it, what is it, nine out of 10 millionaires uh, got their wealth from real estate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, uh, on a lending fund, they don't own the assets and, unless they, uh, there was an issue and they're not going to own them long. <laughs> uh, but it's still part of the real estate and the assets that the uh, lender is lending upon are going to continue to go up in value. So it, it offsets your risk, gives you a good margin. And at the same time, it, it kind of uh, offsets inflation issues. And, and there's another thing too, inflation. How, how are we, uh, able to overcome inflation going forward. Well, one of those is to um, be in a fund that allows you to compound your returns. Correct. Because uh, even though profits are typically going up in an inflationary, it depends on the industry, obviously, but your profits should be going up. Mm -hmm. And then rates that those companies are charging should be going up to um, offset that. Yeah. Really the way to overcome inflation is by compounding over time. I, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, it's, you know, you can take distributions in a fund that gives you, you know, seven or 8% and you can take those quarterly or monthly distributions and make that cash. Then what do you do with it? You spend it. Um, or you can compound that. And what, in a, probably like a 10 year period, you're talking, it's going to be like a yeah, 13 can, to 14%. Yeah. You can have uh 
low single digits, uh, low to mid single digit return. I'm sorry, double digit returns <laughs> um, with, with compounding. But, you know, the same thing holds true if you're investing in property holdings. Uh, you're assuming that those property values will also go up over time. So you've got the benefit of the, the tax breaks through the property holding uh, investments. Uh, then you can pass those through to your lending uh, passive uh, returns. And then at the same time, the values of those property holdings are going to continue to rise in most cases. Yep. I mean, again, we just went through a pandemic where certain property types were taboo and those values went down. But mm -hmm. uh, what happens when uh, some people are disappointed? Other people's benefit. So now they're taking those properties and redeveloping into some, something else. Now, if you were holding those properties, you're the loser. <laughs> but yep. uh, on the other side, you can benefit from somebody else losing there are always going to be winners and losers. You cannot control what you can't control. And you will not always be a winner in real estate. Yes. Most of the time you will, <laughs> but not always. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm sure I confused most of you, but if you have any additional questions, <laughs> we are happy to answer them. You got anything else you want to add? No, I think you did great, Bill. Yeah. I Listen, understand. Numbers are boring. I'm sorry. I have, I have to say that, but uh, they are, but I love them. It's, well, it's how, you know, how we, this is, this is why you're uh, uh, deal makers or deal architects. You have to think about uh, these well, numbers and, and making sure that you're benefiting the most you can uh, from not paying. Yeah. Well, and it's because it's not, you know, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And by employing the best tax strategies, yep. you keep more, which is what you want to do. Absolutely. Folks, thank you so much for joining us on the Passive uh, Investor Show. Uh, we are a Passive Accredited Investor Show. Don't I'm forget sorry. to accredited. I keep saying, uh, I keep wanting to say the Passive, uh, what was it? Investor Show? No, no, no. Is it PISS for short? Pa passive Aggressive. Show. Passive Aggressive. Uh, we are lenders in, for real estate investors in the Southeast. If you are interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and hit the apply now button. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns that may have tax benefits or not, <laughs> go to the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, and don't forget to sign up for Wednesday with Wendy. And again, her calendar link is right there in the chat. Um, I do have one uh, question from uh, Luis. Does your fund generate depreciation? No, because our fund doesn't hold any uh, real estate. We just lend on real estate. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you want depreciation, you have to own a property. <laughs> Correct. So it's a syndication or, a, or a, into a fund right. that owns real estate. But uh, our, our point to this was we wanted to make sure that if, if you're going to invest in anything in particular, because you think you're going to have tax benefits and they do have tax benefits, mm -hmm. but you can only utilize them if you have other passive income to offset those. Yeah, that's all. Exactly. So if you're a W-2 employee in, in a job and you have, tax benefits or tax depreciation, any of that stuff from property holdings and it's uh, a pa in a passive nature, then uh, it doesn't do you any good. Exactly. You'd want to split your investment up between passive and, and Now, active. if you own the property yourself and you're as part of your, your businesses, then you can certainly offset your active income with that. Does that make yeah. sense? And can you give historical returns on your fund over the last three years? I would love to in person, but because uh, SEC rules, I can't. If you'll shoot me an email at bill at carolinahardmoney.com, we can have a uh, more private conversation about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks, have a wonderful day. By the way, we did have some breaking news, but nothing changed. <laughs> so the news is broken. We're, we're gonna... <laughs> Unemployment actually did go up a little bit. Uh, it was kind of unexpected. but. Mm -hmm. It's all going to fluctuate and it's all good. So uh, have a great week. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>